Welcome to the 12th tutorial on Java. Today we are going to be looking at arrays. Arrays are variables. So let's just start that right off the top here. Arrays are variables. The difference is they are a bunch of variables that are grouped together under a common name. So it's kind of like a, so if you wanted to do multiple variables, you can do it under one name. It's kind of like a short way to do that. So with that being said, you can create arrays in the same way you create a variable. And the same type of information that can be stored in a variable can also be stored in an array. So we will get to that now. And we will type in int. The same data types that variables use are also used by arrays because arrays are variables. The only difference is, like I said before, we're going to use square brackets to define this as an array. And the other thing is, so, so for instance, when we say that arrays have the same data types that variables do, we can also do string arrays. We can do single character arrays. We can do byte array. All the different data types that variables are defined with can also be used by array. So we're going to start out with an integer array, and we're going to use square brackets so that Java know, and I'm doing squiggly brackets, square brackets, and now this is going to be an integer array. So we're going to say, we're going to give it a name, and we're going to call this numbers. Now, a quick point here, when you create arrays, they should be in groups of related variables. So to use an old cliche, you're not going to mix oil and water. And so, well, so for instance, let's say this was going to be oils and we were going to do a bunch of variables on oils, a bunch of oil variables. We would not put water in there because that's not similar to oil. We would have to do a water array with different types of water variables. So again, they should be variables that are similar in nature. So that's just a way to think of that. And all of this relates to objects. Now, we are not going to get into objects in this tutorial, but we will get into them in the next tutorials, and I will discuss, after we learn about objects, how they relate to arrays. But for now, I'm just going to talk about the functionality of arrays. So let's go ahead and put back in our name. So to recap, we've defined an int data type for this array. We've put the square brackets here to tell Java this is not going to be a single variable, it's going to be an array of variables. The name of it is going to be numbers. So now that we have the name of our array, we can go ahead and start referencing it in the rest of our program, just like we have been referencing variables in the other tutorials. So let's do that. We're going to go ahead and say numbers, the name of our array, equals, we're going to use the keyword new here, and then we have to specify how many different items will be stored in this, array, in this array. And those are called elements. Now, don't get too confused with elements. They're basically variables. I guess you could call them elements. But we're just going to define here how many elements will be stored in this array. And what we're going to say here is int, and then we're going to do square brackets here. The only difference here is we are going to say how many elements or variables will be stored in this array. And in this case, we're going to say 10. And we're going to go ahead and put a semicolon there. And there you go. So to recap, here's where we defined the array. We called it number. So this is essentially an int array variable, if you want to think of it that way. And then here is where we said this array numbers is going to have 10 elements or 10 variables in it. And here is where we specified how many elements are going to be in this array. And we said there are going to be 10, 10 elements, or just think of them as 10 int variables. It's a good way to think of that. Now, I want to point out one thing right here. You cannot mix and match data types in an array. So here we said this is going to be an integer array. We cannot go over here and say, well, no, this is actually going to be a string. It does not work that way. You have to use the same data type throughout. So that's an important point. So now we're going to go ahead and create all of the int 
variables along with their values down here. But before we do that, let's actually switch this to five because I do not want to create 10 of these suckers. So we're just going to create five variables. And the way we do that is we start out with the array name, which is numbers. And the reason we use the array name here is because we are storing all of our, all of our variables under a common array name, which is numbers. So they do not have individual variable names. Remember that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put in a square bracket now. We're going to put in a zero. Now that actually identifies the variable, the zero. And I'll explain that in a little bit. But it always starts out with a zero and it goes to five in this case. Now if it was 100, we'd go zero, one, two, three. You'd count all the way to 100. We're going to give this variable its value. In this case, we're going to say this equals the number 35, a nice whole number for our int data type. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do some copy and pasting here because I don't want to go ahead and have to put all that back in there. And we're going to create five of these. One, two, three, four, five. And then again, we're going to go one, two, three, four. So this is this section in the middle here is called the index. This, like I said, actually identifies the unique variable. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the index. So, and this will always be the same. It'll always start at 0. Now, you're going to notice that the 4 actually equals the 5. And that is because computers, and I don't know who decided to do this, always start out at 0. So just keep in mind, when you're referencing this fifth variable here, it's actually going to be a 4. That's actually the fifth variable, a 4. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> okay. And let's give these different values. So we'll make this, uh, you know, let's make this 65. We'll make this 135. We'll make this 335. And we'll make this 535. So there we go. So again, let's recap. We created our array here. We called it numbers. It's an int array type. Here we said, okay, this array, we're going to put five variables in here and down here is where we actually created the individual variables and assigned the values to them the numeric values and this is the index and this is actually where we identify the unique variable so this and it always starts out again with zero and one final point before we move on you can call these variables or elements. Remember that. You'll hear these referred to as elements. Once again, this could be a variable or element. The best way to think of it, though, is just a variable. Easier for me, at least, to understand. Okay, so let's move on now. And what we're going to do now is create some output for this and actually reference one of these variables here and print it out. So we will do our famous system.out.print. Now you will put in the array name here, which is numbers. And in square brackets, we will specify the variable that we want. And to do that, we go to the index. And so let's go ahead and print out one. So we will go ahead and do that. The other thing I'd like to point out, remember, so these always go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You do not give these unique variable names. That's the whole point of an array. But this is where you go ahead and specify the variables that you want and the value that you wish to print out. So we're going to go ahead and do a 1. And now we will go ahead and run this. And it's really taking its time here. And we got a 65, exactly what we expected. Now let's go ahead and change this up and reference 4. Now, remember, if you tried to put in a 5 here, that would not work because we always start at 0. So let's go ahead and run this as a 4, and we'll see what we get. And we got the assigned value, 535. Now let's see what happens if you try to go out of bounds here. We'll, we'll actually select a index that does not actually exist. So this variable doesn't even exist. And you'll see here we get an exception that's thrown that says, uh, by the way, you just tried to reference something in this index that didn't work. Alrighty then, so moving along, remember I said that arrays can use different data types just the way variables can? So let's do that now. Let's do a, go ahead and do a string array. So we're going to go ahead and call this candy. And we'll go ahead and 
rename the variable to candy so that it's more appropriate. And actually, we're going to only do two of these because you guys already ha get the idea how this stuff works. So we're just going to do, and then we'll go ahead and just get rid of the rest of these. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and put in the string because we're not going to be using a whole number anymore because this is no longer an int data type. And we have to use quotes. Remember that because this is a string. So we're going to go ahead and put in a string here for a type of candy. Let's just say this is mint. And then we'll come down here and say that this is rock candy. Whoops. So there we go. We've got two types of candy. And we're getting some IntelliSense here because remember I said you cannot mix and match data types. I forgot to change the int, so we need to switch that to a string. And let's specify the zero. We'll take the first one, mint. We want to print that out. And let's go ahead and run this. And voila, there you go, we've got mint. So let's go ahead and close out this output window. There is one final way I would like to show you that you can actually create arrays. And it's a little bit shorter and quicker. And what we do is we actually take the index, these indexes here, and the values, and we place those right into the square brackets itself. So we would type like mint here, we would type in rock, you would actually place the values up here and this becomes the index, the index. So this actually equals zero, this actually equals one. And let's do that now. It's actually easier to show you this really quickly with an int. So let's go ahead and we define int. So we will define the array with the square brackets and we will call this numbers again. We're going to say equals to. Now, instead of a square bracket, we're going to use a squiggly bracket. Let's put in the number five. And then we're going to go ahead and put a comma in, or we're going to put in the number nine. Then we're going to go ahead and put in a closing squiggly bracket, followed by a semicolon. And we're going to go ahead and take this numbers array that we defined down here put that down here now like I said let's go ahead and print out the number nine now this remember these are the values and the index is even though we don't see the index numbers here this is a zero this is a one let's actually put in another uh, let's put in a number number here so we'll put in 45 so this would be zero one two okay for the index and this is the value so it's just a quicker way. We don't have to define everything down here like we did in the other arrays. And then let's go ahead and print out two. And I will expect that we will actually get the number 45. And let's say we did right down here, 45. And let's go ahead and we'll print out zero. We should get a five. Now, personally, I prefer the other way because I like to see all of my variables assigned and written out down here, but this is just a quicker way to initialize these. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Have a nice day.